All right, guys, here we have a duct and we have an inlet at the bottom. We have an air handling unit dispersing the air to three exits at two, three, and four. We have the properties at pretty much every single duct. We don't have everything, but we're looking for the mass flow rate at the inlet in pounds per second, the volumetric flow rate at inlet, or sorry, uh, exit two and three in cubic feet per minute. And we're going to look for the velocity at duct exit four, and it's going to be feet per second. Okay, so let's begin with part A. So for part A, we're looking for the, again, the mass flow rate at, it, at duct number one. So at duct number one, we can use the formula of mass flow rate at one equals the area at one times the velocity at one divided by the specific volume at one. Now notice that this expression, the numerator, is just equal to the volumetric flow rate. So we can go ahead and set that equal to 15,000 and that would be 15,000 feet cubed per minute. So I'm going to go ahead and convert it into seconds just by dividing it by 60. So you have per one minute, 60 seconds. Now this expression should yield us a unit in feet cubed per second. Now the last thing we need to find the mass flow rate is going to be the specific volume. So to find that, we're going to have to use the ideal gas law. So as we are told in the problem statement, over here we have the ideal gas behavior for the air. So we can use the expression of PV, so we'll say P1, V1 equals RT1. So this is the PV equals MRT, but if you just divide both sides by M, the volume turns into a specific volume on a per unit mass basis. And now we can just rearrange and say V1 equals RT1 over P1. And we can just plug in what we have for this. So first we can calculate R, which is the gas constant. So remember that the gas constant equals the universal gas constant divided by the molar mass. In English units, the universal gas constant equals 1545 foot-pounds per pound mole degree Rankin. I know that's a really long unit, divided by 28.97, which is the molar mass of air, pounds per pound mole. Fortunately, we can simplify this by canceling out the pounds in pounds, pound moles in pound moles, and you're going to have feet per degree Rankin. Plug this into your calculator and find that the gas constant equals 53.33 feet per degree Rankin. I know that's a pretty weird unit, but that's just what it is. So we can fill that in up here, 53.33. And then the temperature we had as 35 Fahrenheit. So to get from Fahrenheit to Rankin, we're going to have to add 460. So we'll have 495 degrees Rankin. Divide all of that by the pressure. So the pressure was one atmosphere, which is 14.7 PSI. So to get from PSI to PSF, which is pounds per square foot, it's going to equal 21, 16.8 PSF. So now if you just plug this into a calculator, you'll find that V1 equals 12.47 feet cubed per pound. And this is the specific volume that we can now use to find the mass flow rate. So if we divide 15,000 divided by 60 divided by 12.47, we should yield from our calculator 20.047 pounds per second. Now for part B, to find the volumetric flow rate at duct 2 and 3, we know that the volumetric flow rate at 2 equals the area at 2 times the velocity at 2. And we know the area at 2, so let me break this down a little bit more. The area at 2 equals pi d squared over 4. And that's diameter 2 times velocity 2. And this just equals pi times the diameter, which was 26 inches, but divide it by 12 to get feet. Square that, divide it by 4. That's your area. And multiply it by the velocity, which is 10 feet per second. So you have 10 feet per second. But notice that because you have feet per second and the problem actually asks for cubic feet per minute, you should divide this, or sorry, multiply this by 60 seconds to convert from meters per second, or sorry, feet cubed per second to feet cubed per minute. So multiply by 60 seconds per one minute. And then if you plug this in your calculator, you'll find that the volumetric flow rate at two equals 
2,212.2 cubic feet per minute. And because the diameter at 2 and 3 are equal, and the velocities at 2 and 3 are equal, we know that V3 should also equal V2, so that's also 2212.2 cubic feet per minute. Now finally for part C, we have to find the velocity at duct 4. So to find the velocity at duct 4, I'm going to use this equation that we used for the initial part A, mass, except I'm going to rearrange for the velocity. So by rearranging, I should know that the velocity at 4 equals the mass flow rate at 4 times the specific volume at 4 divided by the area at 4. So to find the mass flow rate at duct 4, we're going to have to do a conservation of mass analysis over the entire system here, which just states that the incoming mass flow rates must be equal to the exiting mass flow rates. And the incoming mass flow rates would be equal to m.1, and the exiting mass flow rates are m.2, m.3, and m.4. I'm going to keep the units here in pounds per second. So we already have m.1, which is equal to 20.047. So to find m.2 slash m.3, I'm going to use the um, ideal gas law at 2 and 3. I'm actually going to write it in the part B step here. So we have P2 v2 equals mrt2 and there should be a 2 on the m dot as well so the pressure equals 21 16.8 pounds per square foot now the volumetric flow rate is just going to be 22 12.2 divided by 60 volumetric flow rate again was calculated right over here in feet cubed per minute. We need it in feet cubed per second. Set this all equal to the mass flow rate at 2 times the gas constant, which is 53.33. And the temperature at 2 is given as 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which if you add 460 is 540 degrees Rankin. So now if you just rearrange and solve for m.2, which equals m.3, you should have 2.71 pounds per second. Now we can go ahead and use that in the conservation of mass down here. So we have 2.71 plus 2.71 plus m.4. Now that we only have one unknown, which is m.4, we know that m.4 equals 14.627 kilograms per second. Next, we're going to need the specific volume at 4. So to do that, I'm going to use the expression of pressure times specific volume equals gas constant times temperature. This is actually the ideal gas law, and I'm going to rearrange it by saying that the specific volume equals RT over P. And this is just 53.33 times 540 degrees Rankin divided by 21, 16.8 PSF. And if you plug this in your calculator, you'll find that the specific volume at 4 equals 13.605, and the unit is cubic feet per pound. So let's go ahead and plug this into our expression here. So we have velocity 4 equals the mass, which was 14.627 pounds per second. I actually realized I wrote kilograms per second over here. Go ahead and correct that into pounds. The specific volume was 13.605, and that was cubic feet per pound. Divide all of that by the area, which is just, again, pi d squared over 4, or in this case, pi times 50 divided by 12 squared over 4. Now, if you plug this whole mess into a calculator, you'll find that the velocity at 4 equals 14.59 feet per second. 